All right, this is fourth grade, module five, lesson 11. And in this lesson, we're going to be taking that area model and kind of putting it aside that we've been using for the past few lessons. And now we're going to be connecting fractions to number lines and tape diagrams. And really, if you think about it, tape diagrams are kind of like a very special case area model where our row, we always have one row instead of like a brownie, like an area with multiple rows or multiple layers, a tape diagram is essentially an area model with, an air, with a height, uh, a row of one. So let's get started on that. So what's going on here is we have three identical lengths. Right here, you'll notice this guy is, is the same length as this and is the same length as this. The difference is they're partitioned in different ways. And so what we're going to do is we're going to label our fractions. And the first thing, our number line, and we can see that this has been cut into three pieces. So this is zero thirds, one third, two thirds, and three thirds. So it's important that students see that, hey, look at that, three thirds is equal to the whole thing, and zero thirds is really the same thing as zero. And then uh, down here, we can see that it's been cut into six pieces. So this is zero sixths, one sixths, two sixths, three sixths. I have a hard time saying sixths. Oops, sixths five sixths and of course six sixths equaling that one whole thing and then the last one right here way down here oh my goodness we have one of those four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve oh my goodness those are twelfths so I'm just gonna start with this being zero twelfths and for the sake of speed I'm gonna make this four twelfths and then of course this is twelve twelfths because now really what we want, what they're asking us to do is they're saying, well, circle the fraction that equals your shaded length. So that's one-third, two-sixths, and four-twelfths, all right? And now what we're seeing is that those three fractions that we just circled, one-third, two-sixths, and four-twelfths are all equivalent to each other. They're all representing the exact same length of shaded stuff. Uh, they're just partitioned in different ways. And so what that means is we can use multiplication to show that one-third is equivalent to two-sixths. We can say, hey, look at this. One times two and three times two gives us two-sixths. 1 times 2 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6. That's because we took each of these partitions in 1 third and cut them into two pieces, and suddenly we got sixths. Uh, we can also do that with 1 third and 4 twelfths. We can show using multiplication, uh, and actually I'm going to kind of do this in a different way, we can show that, hey, look at this, 1 times 4 is 4, and 3 times 4 is 12. So I want to make this go bye-bye. All right, that's gone. All right, so we can see that 1 times 4 is 4, 3 times 4 is 12, so 1 third is equivalent to 4 twelfths. And we can go backwards as well. We could go the opposite direction. For example, we could say 4 twelfths is equal, and I, again, I want to make that guy go away there, uh, 4 twelfths is equal to 1 third, and we can do that showing, uh, show that using division. We could say, hey, 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. So 4 divided by 4 is 1, 12 divided by 4 is 3. So these, uh, we're using number lines and tape diagrams instead of the area model to really prove the same multiplication and division stuff that we had already learned in our previous lessons. This is exactly the same thing as the previous slide, only now they want us to create the number line. So we know right here is 0, 
and this right here is one whole, and we can see that everything has been cut into four pieces. Our whole has been cut into four pieces, so that means this is zero fourths, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and four fourths, and we can see that our shaded part is two fourths. In the same kind of fashion, we can do that down here, and we can see that this has been cut into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. So that means each of these is an eighth. So we've got one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, and I'm going to put that right here four eighths, five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, eight eighths. So parents and teachers, I'm kind of skipping labeling all of these. You shouldn't. Working with your fourth graders, you really should label everything. But for the sake of brevity, I'm kind of making things go a little bit faster. And as we go, you can see that the same kind of relationship is happening as in the previous slide, where we're still um, seeing that same kind of multiplication uh, equivalence patterns. For example, two-fourths is equal to four-eighths. How do we know? because they both represent the exact same length of tape diagram, and we can see it in a multiplication sentence. We can see that, hmm, two-fourths, if we take two and multiply it by two, and if we take four and multiply by two, we end up with four-eighths, and that's exactly down here, and we can see that these guys are equivalent. I'm going to skip this bottom one, but parents and teachers, I think I've laid the groundwork to help you understand what to do down here. This looks like everything is going to be, uh, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Ooh, so this is going to be tenths, and you can um, continue going that way. What will be tricky, however, is that because these are tenths, you've got zero tenths right here. And we know this is 10 tenths. That means this one right here is 5 tenths. If we were to count it out, we've got 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths, 4 tenths. There's our 5 tenths, 6 tenths, 7 tenths, 8 tenths, 9 tenths, and then finally 10 tenths. What's going to be a little tricky, though, is uh, you are not going to be able to show uh, very easily that uh, four eighths is equivalent to five tenths. Uh, however, you can use division to show that they are equivalent. So what I mean by that is we could take four eighths and we can divide both the numerator by four and the denominator by four, and we're going to get one half because four divided by four is one, 8 divided by 4 is 2. So now you have 4 eighths is equivalent to 1 half. And in that same kind of way, we could do the same thing with 5 tenths. We could say, well, you start with 5 tenths, and if you have 5 tenths, and you could divide both the numerator by 5 and the denominator by 5, and in doing so, we get 1 half, because we can see that 5 divided by 5 is 1, 10 divided by 5 is 2. So now we could see that 4 eighths is 1 half, and 5 tenths is 1 half. And so that's how we can show that 4 eighths and 5 tenths are the exact same thing. I mean, it looks the same right here, but mathematically we show it using division. I thought this problem was a little tricky, so for our last problem for this video, we, I chose this one. It says partition a number line into fourths. So we're going to go from 0 to 1, and we're going to cut it into fourths. And so here's 0 fourths, this is 1 fourth, this is 2 fourths, this is 3 fourths, and really if you think about it, um, one whole is the same thing as 4 fourths. And then it says decompose three-fourths into six equal lengths. So the idea is here is three-fourths and we want to cut that into six equal lengths. Well the way we're going to do that is you take 
each of these little guys, because I'm going to highlight that, here's three-fourths. And right now, that's one, two, three lengths, and we want to turn it into six lengths. The way we do that is we just take each of those guys and cut it, which means we're going to cut this one in half as well. So now, three-fourths suddenly becomes six-eighths. How did I get that? Well, because I can see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One whole has been cut into eight pieces. So suddenly, this becomes zero-eighths. This guy becomes one-eighth. This is two-eighths. This guy is three-eighths. This is four-eighths. This guy is five-eighths. Here is our six-eighths right here. This guy becomes our seven-eighths, and then here's our eight-eighths. And so we can see that three-fourths is equivalent to six-eighths. And we can show that using multiplication. Three-fourths, if you times that by two and times that by two, you suddenly get six-eighths. So that means three-fourths is equivalent to six-eighths. And that wraps up 4th grade, Module 5, Lesson 11, where we're avoiding the area model for a little bit, and instead we're going to be using, we use the tape diagram, we use the number lines, and we're using those two models to show equivalent fractions using multiplication and division.